Hi, on take five today, we are looking at this question, where do we draw a value from? Development or intrinsic dignity? When discrimination or hatred show their ugly heads, a question that almost always pops up would be, where do humans draw their value from? People are often identified based on their social network, their achievements in life, their family background or their net worth. While the data is helpful to understanding people better, to treat people based only on these qualifications smacks of an immaturity. The Bible holds that all human beings right from the womb all the way to the tomb have essential value and dignity. Nobel laureate and economist Amartya Sen talked about the market value of the masses. He pointed out that in different times in civilization, different professions were much sought after. There was a time when doctors were in great demand. There was another instance when lawyers were paid lucratively because their services were much needed. He raised this to point out that the market value of the poor farmers in India needs to be recognized irrespective of the social demand. Yes, all human beings have essential worth. There is so much to learn on this topic from the life of Jesus in the Gospels. He reached out to a range of people. He reached out to little children. He engaged with the religious leaders of his time. He addressed multitudes of people by the seashore of Galilee. In fact, Jesus even reached out to the tax collector and the sinner. Please remember, we find in the Gospels that people of ill repute and with a social stigma also found Jesus very approachable. Think of these instances, Jesus' encounter with Zacchaeus. Many an evangelist would have been happy to pass on an evangelistic track to Zacchaeus or issue a warning and move on. But Jesus stopped, called him by his name and said, I must stay at your house. Please remember, Jesus only had about three and a half years of public ministry and he was willing to spend one evening in Zacchaeus' house. Think about his exchange with that woman at the well that we read in John's Gospel, chapter 4. The woman is surprised that he reached out to her. She said, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan and you are asking me for a drink. Jesus comfortably tides over those human-made barriers. Number one, she was not a Jew. Number two, she was a woman. Number three, she was an immoral person at that. No wonder she became the very first evangelist because she drew many people to the Messiah. Jesus treated all people with respect and dignity including the disciple who betrayed him. And it is not at all surprising that his half-brother James, a leader of the early church, had these words to pen in his epistle. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism, he wrote. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? So good to know that our essential dignity comes not because of our position on the social strata, not because of our degrees or the development, but because you and I are made in the image of our maker. So as we recognize God's dignity 
and value that he places on our lives let us reach out and take the message to other people no wonder jesus said whoever is forgiven more also loves more may this amazing grace flow through our lives and bless all people because every one of them is treasured by god god blesses and make us a blessing